How long have you been into painting in ha Oh no, I did that one already. I got some great questions from you that I'm going to answer in today's video. Hi there, I'm Jean. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've now got 10,000 of you subscribed to my channel, which is absolutely insane to me. I would have never thought that that would be possible when I started earlier this year. So thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it so much. And to celebrate, and also because it's the end of the year and everybody's hopefully calming down a little, even though it's probably the opposite right now, but I'm sure in about a week or so, we'll all have time to rest a bit. So I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to ask you all what questions you have for me. So I asked on Instagram and I asked on the YouTube creator tab what you would like to know. And I got some really great questions. So let's start with a question from Instagram. Any advice on applying for galleries or being part of an art fair? So I haven't actually applied to galleries yet. That might be something I'm going to look into this year. Um, I have showed in galleries um, through group exhibitions. So they were open calls that anybody can enter. So you just, um, you usually pay an entry fee and fill out a form and put up a picture of your work. And then there's a selection committee that either selects your work or they don't. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your artwork's not good. It might just mean that for this particular exhibition, they're looking for a different style or they were just in a mood that where your artwork didn't catch their eye. So if you get rejected, do not feel bad about it. it happens to the best of us. So I have done that and I've been in a few group exhibitions that way. Um, I have been to one art fair and I definitely want to go to more this year or next year, 2024. Crazy that it's already 2024. So I have been to one art fair. It's called the New Artist Fair and it's in London. Again, you submit a few images of your work and give them a short bio and a, an artist statement. You don't pay an entry fee, you only pay if they select you. So again, there's a selection committee and they select a range of artists that they feel like suit their fair. So I did one of those, but have I got any advice on other what the actual process is? Um, both for art fairs and probably also applying to galleries. It's good if you already have quite a cohesive body of work. It doesn't mean everything has to look the same. You can obviously have variety in your art, but you should have sort of what they call your style, which is just comes with the more you make, the more your style kind of evolves. The more you create, the more people can see sort of a common thread running through your work. That's also part of why I really enjoy working in series, because if I'm making a bunch of paintings at the same time, they all kind of have a cohesive style, because I was in the same mood when I made them. And then over time, the more art you make, obviously, the more you figure out what you like and the kind of marks you make, the kind of colours you use, it will all just evolve over time. And then if a gallerist or an art fair curator sees that, then they feel more likely to know what kind of artwork you might continue to make. So a cohesive body of work is, I think, very helpful. Um, other than that, I think it's a lot of luck if you do get into an art fair or a gallery even more so, because spaces in galleries are quite limited. In an art fair, there's probably more spaces to, more available, more available spaces to people applying to be in the art fair. I don't know if that was helpful. If you have any more questions, do feel free to let me know. Another question is, where do you source your inspiration from? Um, I do work very intuitively. So a lot of the, a lot of my work is very process led. So I do start with kind of an initial idea, kind of what's going on in my life, what, uh, what my mind is occupied with. So for example, a lot of my work is grounded on having that a balance of energy, doing things in your life, and then also needing rest and inward reflection. 
for example, my last series was called Stillness Within, and that was really about going inward and taking the time to reflect and process all the busyness that's going on in your life. And based on that kind of very wishy-washy broad concept, I then look at things that I have noticed really. It's, it's very much about things I notice and then compiling those uh, into things like a mood board. So I might go on Pinterest and scroll through. I actually have a video showing how I make a mood board like that. Uh, I'll link it down below and possibly up here. Um, and just scroll through and see what catches my eye. So for example, really spacious images or certain colors that I'm drawn to or a kind of, um, maybe I'm drawn to more geometric patterns in things. And then I compile all that, put it on a board. And that is kind of my starting point for a series. And then also colors, which colors have I recently been enjoying very much? Like there used to be a period where, um, where I first started painting again, I was very much into like paints gray and ultramarine blue. I'm still quite into ultramarine blue, but then I went off more into an earthy color palette. And I noticed that, and then that kind of informs future work or even the work I'm working on at that moment. I might even decide to change a color palette halfway through a series if I really want to go that way. And I don't really have a certain field that I draw inspiration from like design. It could be anywhere from design, um, nature. It just really keeps on changing. It's mainly about visual things that I see. And then also while I'm painting in the process, I'm creating intuitively where I think all the inspiration I gathered beforehand will subconsciously influence me. I don't go back to my mood board a lot and think, oh, I need, I need, um, I haven't used this color. I need to use that color. Um, but because originally, for example, I was drawn to spaciousness that will be very present in me. And then while I paint and I have a very busy painting in front of me, uh, I often feel it needs to breathe. It needs more spaciousness. I need to add that. So that comes through subconsciously. Do you have a favorite artwork that you created in 2023? I do. It's actually this piece. I got it out especially for you. Um, it's from my last series and uh, it's called Silent Reflection. Let me get it. It's my favorite because it really captures that um, tranquility it has a lot of, you can see underneath here, there's a lot of vibrant color and energy in the marks. And then over that, you have that really soft, mellow, light blue wash that has a lot of interest in it, where the color just very, very subtly changes. And I feel like that really encapsulates what I was trying to achieve with that series. This calmness within the chaos and it has some of my favorite textures in it, like at the bottom here. That was a, a collage piece that I made a while ago and that I really loved. So this is my favorite piece from 2023. Car is three o'clock and it's getting dark already. That's the annoying side of winter. I was wondering about your artistic journey. How long have you been into painting and how did you end up choosing abstract art? I was always kind of painting when I was little. I don't know if that counts. I think everybody was probably painting when they were little. And um, I got a bit more into, not serious painting, but more um, like acrylics. And I started oil painting uh, in my teenage years, but I mainly did representational because I don't know, that's just what I thought you did. So I did represent representational paintings. Um, and then I went off to study fashion design and where I studied was a very art focused course. So to get in, you need to prepare a portfolio. And for that, I practiced a lot of drawing, mainly drawing, not so much painting. And then in the course, we had painting classes and drawing classes all the time. And also because it was fashion, fashion illustration classes. So. Back then I mainly did um, 
a drawing and then watercolour, or maybe drawing with watercolour actually, more than, rather than pencil. I love charcoal, it's just so messy, which is why I haven't touched it yet since. Mainly watercolour, and in the actual painting classes, I was so bad. Well, from my point of view now, it was very naive kind of painting, um, only bright colours and I used some like neon and gold. Not to say that's bad if you do use that. You can create some beautiful effects with that, just the way I did. I wouldn't do it again today. And I kind of wasn't really into painting. I wasn't quite into drawing. I wasn't into painting. And um, once I finished uni, I didn't do any drawing anymore. I think I was just so kind of over it. But I always wanted to go back into, I always thought drawing. And it felt very lab laborious. It was too much effort. So I didn't do very much. I kind of did a little bit every now and then, but and then stopped again, did a little bit. But again, it was all representational. And a, the problem with representational is I didn't know what to draw or what to paint. So I didn't even bother most of the time. And then a few years ago, I really wanted to do painting, like paint painting again. I think it was after I discovered Laura Horne's podcast and also some of her courses that really made me want to pick up a paintbrush again. And that was, I think, maybe 2019 and then in 2020 obviously you know what happens and because I was able to work from home for my company that meant I had a lot more time because I didn't have to commute to work I uh, could do stuff before I start work so I really got into painting again and I think it was actually Laura's courses that um, kind of made me start looking into or trying abstract pieces I had so much fun doing that. It was so freeing that you didn't need a subject to work from. You could just take a paintbrush and make a mark and make another mark and just keep going like that. Uh, it was so freeing. I remember that one afternoon, I was it, a, it must, must have been a weekend day and I created so many small pieces like I've never made that much art in one day I think and I thought this is really what I want to do I really want to do abstract painting and learn more about it get into it practice do it all the time and it all started from there and that is how I got into abstract painting because it is so free I do every now and then think oh maybe I will try something representational I did a little bit of still life last year I did enjoy that but it's just I don't really have the patience to especially don't have the patience to draw some uh, paint something representational that you recognize like a more kind of realistic version but it, I am really into the idea of painting more abstracted realism and I started this course uh, by Gabriella Buckingham I can really recommend it it's a great course it's called experimental still life it's really great if you want to do a little bit more experimental kind of abstract still life so I do want to get more into that but I still really love the abstract painting process because it's so free if you like this video consider subscribing I'm always fascinated in major turning points in mindset epiphanies we all have different ones depending on the individual maybe share some of yours and I really like what she says here one of mine was finally learning to value my opinion of my art first over other people's opinions. That is so important. <clears throat> Not everyone is going to click with your style, palette, shapes, etc. And that's totally okay because everyone has their own personal tastes from their personal experience. It's so important for sustainable art practice to find your own voice and not to try to paint what you think others might like. That is a very, very good tip. Once you stop thinking about, it's very difficult to do this. I still do it every now and then. Once you stop thinking, what are people going to think about this painting? It's, do they think it's too red? Is it not representational? Should I, should I do some of that instead? Um, that kills your art and your joy of making art. So if you like neon colours, if you like painting flowers or landscapes, if you like painting abstract, do it. Only paint what you want to paint, not what you think other people want you to paint. But the actual question was, share one of your epiphanies 
your one of your major turning points in mindset. I found it so helpful when I realised that taking risks in your painting brings you so much forward, so much further. I paint a lot in layers and at some point um, you think, oh, I really, really like this part of the painting and you keep on painting around, leaving that bit, painting around, changing everything else and it's not working. And as soon as you take the risk and paint over that one bit that you love, it just changes the whole painting and usually helps you progress it forward. You can take a picture of it if you really love it, keep it for future reference, but if it's holding you back in creating a whole painting that you love, then it's got to go. And also taking risks, for example, if you've been doing one thing for a while and you're like, people like that one thing, but I really want to do something else, do that other thing that in, that you really want to do. Or if you use little brushes and you're like, mm, I'm so comfortable with these little brushes, take a risk, take a big, big brush, make a mark over your painting. It feels so freeing and it usually ends up um, with a better result. So take risks in your art. My question is how to go over the fear to mess up a painting. It's taking the risk. I don't think you get over the fear, you just have to feel the fear and do it anyway. You can't really mess up a painting because, well, if you work with watercolours or maybe another medium, you could probably mess up the painting. But that's why I love painting with acrylics because you can always paint over it. So if you have a painting and you love it, it's probably finished. There's a few more factors to that, but if you have a painting and you sort of love it, but you think it needs something else, you can't ruin it because it's not there yet. So do something drastic to it. If I really don't know what to do and it's not working, what I like to do is take a big brush, dip it in paint and make a big mark. And that will prompt you to respond to that and change it up. And if then the painting looks worse than before, I suggest taking a picture beforehand and keep on painting over it or put it aside for a year, keep on painting on it then. And if the painting wasn't there and the f wasn't finished in the first place, you haven't ruined it. As an artist, how do you handle the tech side with your artistic side? Doesn't setting up the camera and filming disrupt your flow? It's a bit annoying setting everything up. I might now have a space where I can leave things, sort of leave things the way they are. Before I filmed in my dining room and I had to set everything up, pack everything away every time I wanted to film something. Um, in terms of disrupting the flow, I don't do hour long painting sessions, well, not several hours. Um, so I just set everything up once, set up the camera, set up the microphone, other camera, and then I start painting and the camera just films. I don't have to really do anything. I do have to kind of talk out loud while I'm painting, or most of the time I do that, uh, which I thought would kind of disrupt the flow. But what I've found is that it actually really helps me kind of realize what I'm doing rather than just painting away quietly. Sometimes I prefer to do that. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to talk while I'm painting, but it does really help me uh, reflect on what I'm doing. So I find it rather helpful than distracting. For the framing of your paintings, do you make them or do you buy them and paint it after? I do buy my frames. So I buy pre-made frames and then I finish them. So I usually buy wooden frames that I then paint in a colour to match my painting, like on this one. You can see the frame, I painted that in colour that was kind of around the edges already, like this kind of colour. That's the colour I use for the frame. I would love to make my own frames, but I haven't had the tools or the time or the knowledge to make my frames. Um, but one day maybe that would be really exciting, I think. But probably I'll, I won't because it takes up a lot of time. Already takes up a lot of time to paint the frames and then making the frames. Um, I need time to paint, but I am interested in making my own frames. I always find your video videos inspiring, but since I came back from holiday in September, I can't seem to get going with my art as life keeps getting in the way. Any suggestions? That is very difficult. I do struggle with that a lot. Sometimes you just need a little break, just time to reflect on what you've done, not 
consciously, but to just take a breather and not make up for a few weeks, maybe. And then start fresh. But it is really difficult to then go back in once you haven't painted in a while. It kind of, it's difficult to start again. I think once you've started, it's a lot easier to keep going. So what I find really helpful is having, or even if you don't have yet have a consistent art practice. So what I find helpful is having your things set up. If you have the tiniest amount of space where you can leave your art supplies out so they're ready to go, like have your sketchbook maybe and paint and your jar for water, have it all set up so you can just, whenever you have five minutes, just go dip a brush into the paint, make some marks and you don't even have to do it for painting, you can just do a little bit. I actually find I prefer working in shorter um, time spans rather than one long session. I find it super draining if you do one long session, but it is fun. So having your things already set up, maybe if you have sketchbooks, go through your sketchbooks and see if there's something you really in remember that you enjoyed making. For example, painting with a toothbrush, something like that, or you really enjoyed a combination of colours, then just take those two colours and just start playing with it. Always start playing is um, the best way to start again. Don't go in and have a big plan in mind, just take some cheap paper and start playing. A really fun exercise, if you don't know what you want to do, uh, if you don't have a lot of motivation, I have on my channel, I'll link it up here, it's where you tape off squares, you can do it in a sketchbook uh, as a small version or you can do it on a really large sheet. I find it really fun on a large sheet, but that is a lot of setting up. And then you just take any mark making tools you can find, like it can be a an old fork, a normal brush, or like a sponge, some paper towel, and a very limited palette, just pick like three colours and just make marks on the paper over the taped squares. It's quite satisfying because once you um, reveal the tape and cut up all the little pieces, they all look quite satisfying because you don't really notice what you're doing while you're making it, but then at the end you have these cute little squares that you can then work over again. So try that exercise if you're stuck. How do you sell your work? Website, gallery. So I have a website, it's www.jclose, J-C-L-O-S-E, studio, all one word, dot com. You can find the link below. Uh, I sell my artwork there. I have some work, especially older work, on Instagram. If you find something there that you like, um, I might have paint, painted over it, I might still have it, then you can also send me a message. Um, but mainly I sell through my website. And then also every now and then I have a piece in a gallery for for like a group show and then you can purchase that through the gallery. At the moment I have one with my local gallery, Thurston Art Gallery. Uh, there's one piece in there that you can purchase through the gallery. But the best place is my website. Are there any mediums, styles, methods that you've used in the past that you no longer do? Like I mentioned earlier, um, representational painting. I don't really do it anymore. I'm not saying I won't do it. I'm quite interested in maybe one day trying some, but more in an abstracted form. Mediums, methods. It's a very good question. Um, I guess when I was a teenager, I used to use things like molding paste and those like really textured structure pastes with like sand and grit in them. I found that really fun. I don't use that anymore. I just have other ways of creating texture and creating interest. When I first started properly again, like in 2020, I was really into raw canvas. So I stretched a bunch, uh, stretched my own raw canvas or even unstretched and then used that. Um, you have to use a medium to be able for the paint to soak into the canvas. What's it called? This thing, ah, wetting agent it's called. So it's by Golden. I haven't used that in a very long time. Every now and then again, I did try a little bit on raw canvas, but I feel like it always ends up looking a lot like what you see out there. I haven't really found a way of making it my own. First, that was all I wanted to do. I, I wasn't really interested in painting on, gesso, painting on gesso canvas because I was so into watercolor before and I really loved the fuzzy edges of a wet and wet technique and I couldn't achieve that on a gesso canvas. Now I kind of know how I can. Not in the same way, though, as on raw canvas. 
Any other mediums? I don't think so. I use all the mediums. I have so many art materials and I go through phases of, for a few months I'll really love soft pastels and then not use them for, I don't know, a year. And then I'm really into oil pastels and use those. Um, it just keeps on rotating. So there isn't really something I wouldn't use again, I think. Not that I can remember. But I do go through phases of using different materials and different techniques. Sometimes I forget about a technique that I really loved and then discover it again after a couple of years. And I'm like, ooh, I really did enjoy that. I should try that again. Thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you so much for your support. Um, I'm still blown away by how many of you actually watch my videos and by your such heartfelt comments of how you find inspiration in my videos. It's just such a joy to hear. So thank you so much for every single comment you leave and every single video you watch. I've not put up any videos in the last couple of weeks because I've been very, very busy. There's some big things coming. Well, uh, one big change really for me. You'll mm, find out more about that very, very soon. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Thanks and bye bye.